just to be completely transparent, I just did um, just about 15k in sales. I would think it was 500 short. Um, so that was that was my best month ever. Do you feel like the economy is hurting your business? What if I told you that one of my clients here, Harmony, actually raised her prices a few months ago and had her best month ever last month? Without further ado, Harmony, welcome back to the podcast. I know you have uh, you were on the podcast about a year ago, and it's great to have you back. So how is your business doing so far? Um, as good as ever. It's been, you know, a constant, nice flow. I've never had any, you know, slow periods since hiring you that I've had to be like stressing about where my next meal is coming from or if I can buy this or I can buy that. Um, so it's better than ever. Um, I haven't since hiring you a year and just, a, just about a half ago. So a year and just about a half. I haven't had any slow periods. It's been nice and consistently busy. I haven't had, you know, any slow periods where I've had to worry about, you know, if there's, if I'm going to be able to put food on my table or if I have any clients next week kind of thing. I've always consistently, since I've hired you, had, you know, been booked out like two to four months. Two is the minimum. Four months is where I kind of slow down and <laughs> I raise my prices mm -hmm. maybe. But so what I did in December was I raised my prices. So I think, no, the economy is not affecting my business. If you do it right, um, everyone still wants to do things, right? So I feel like, so I had my busiest month, my most profitable month in February um, of this this year. So like last month was the busiest, most profitable month I've ever had. Um, just to be completely transparent, I just did um, just about 15k in sales I would think it was 500 short um so that was that was my best month ever and I have that's after raising my prices $100 in December and still consistently running ads and I'm still booked I think my next opening is May so nice well, congrats epic. on that that's awesome now was Thanks. that was that most was that all browse um, so that's a mix. Uh, so the, the ads that you guys run for me are all just browse, but mm -hmm. because browse is the, the top, I guess, most popular service that I offer. Um, but then those, those yeah. brow clients after I get them, you know, I sell them into eyeliner or I sell them into lips or they're just generally or genuinely interested by themselves. So, um, I've done probably 60% brows and then the rest has been um, like eyeliner and lips as well. Um, there was also a permanent jewelry pop up in there too. So permanent Perfect. jewelry is where it's at. That was only one day, one day of permanent jewelry. So, <laughs> and how much did you make in that one day of permanent jewelry? Um, we were there for five hours and our profits were $2,800. So nice. it was pretty, it was pretty nice. It was pretty nice. And it was, it was busy. I bring an assistant with me just because they get them filling out the consent forms, which basically mm -hmm. has them, you know, told about the warranty and stuff and, and repairs and things like that. And then um, it also helps me get their email and their phone number and stuff for marketing. So <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> I'm doing better. <laughs> yeah, and that's that's a common question I get is like, well, you know, if I offer multiple services, should I run ads for all the services? And I would argue no, just pick one service to kind of get like the whole point of ads is to get attention and getting people in the door. Once you get their attention and you're talking to them, you can sell them whatever you want, brows, eyeliner, lips, permanent jewelry. Um, it's all about just getting that initial contact is what we specialize in. Let's talk a little bit about permanent jewelry because, you know, I'm obviously passionate about it. I own linked permanent jewelry training. I wear it myself. I love the fact that you know, I've been working with you for a year and a half and you just added permanent jewelry, you know, what, a couple months ago, a few months ago. Like um, I jumped on it the second you had it. So you had posted a post on Instagram with, I think it was your cousin and she was doing permanent jewelry or something. I was like, Jake, where'd you learn? And you were like, Shh, I can't tell you yet. <laughs> I was like, come on, I need to know. Like, I'm going to jump on a course with someone quick. I want to do this. So um, yeah, it was shortly after that, I think that you announced that you were launching a course um, uh, with Sarah there. And I was like, yes, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Sign me up like tomorrow kind of thing. And I think that 
the relationship that I have with you is the kind of the same relationship that I have with my clients, right? Like they come to me for one thing and then they gain, I gain their trust, right? We build a rapport, we build a relationship and then they trust me with all other future recommendations and stuff. And that's very much how I am with you. Like, I feel like if you told me that purple dinosaurs, little rubber toy things were the next best thing, I would be like, yes, sign me up. <laughs> Please don't do something <laughs> like that. But it is to that extent. Like, I just feel like, everything that we've had and like you've done for my business and stuff it's just you know it's all about building that rapport and that trust and stuff so anything that you rep just take my credit card on file at this point <laughs> yeah and i'd like to dive into that a little deeper not your credit card but the the topic <laughs> um <laughs> because you know a lot of people think like or especially new business owners or people that don't have much experience that, you know, they're like, well, you know, I'm going to spend money on ads and I want to make, you know, $400 for a brow client or 500, whatever they charge. They don't really think about, you know, building that relationship, building that rapport so that, you know, they can offer them multiple services. They can create a repeat customer or referral, you know, or a great, you know, clientele base. Like there's so much more to, you know, business than just like, all right, I'm going to get one client and I'm going to make this much money. Like that you just, you got to have like a, you got to turn into a whole network of opportunity. Yes. So, and just based on that, so uh, you run brow ads for me, right? And I'll give you an example. Um, I had a client come up three weeks ago um, from the States. I'm in Canada. I'm about an hour north of the border. So I had a client see my ad in the States and she had no issues coming up to see me um, in Canada. And we did booked her. Well, we did a FaceTime consultation. I think those are very important mm -hmm. for the market that I'm in. Everyone comes from far away. Um, so we did a FaceTime consultation. We booked her in for brows. We did her brows at her brow appointment. She saw my permanent jewelry display walking by. We did her permanent jewelry, gave her a brace, well, a bracelet and uh, a charm. Mm -hmm. Um, when she was leaving and we booked her, her eyeliner at her brow touch up. So she is not, so from that one ad, I made probably $1,500 off of her mm -hmm. just in brows. And then I upsold eyeliner and I upsold permanent jewelry. So like, it's crazy. And it's basically because like, you know, we were messaging back and forth after she messaged my, like saw my ad and things like that. And then the FaceTime consultation, I booked those for an hour just because I tell them like, it's probably only going to take a half an hour, but I'm super chatty. So I'll book it for an hour just in <laughs> case. And usually they're like, that's perfect. So am I. So, um, and then, yeah, once she's in my chair and I'm talking to her and we're mapping her out and we're doing her brows and stuff. And I don't know, it's just, it's so cool. The relationships that you build with these people and stuff. And like, obviously I'm in it for the money and stuff, but it's also nice building that reputation for yourself as well too so to the point where she could trust me with you know now eyeliner and permanent jewelry like heck yeah so yeah and the advantage you have over someone who's like let's say just a microblading artist is a microblading artist even if they charge you know 700 dollars for brows that one client is really only about worth 700 dollars. i get that they might come back in like a year but that's a long time and so yeah you know, whereas you, like you could get a client in and they could be worth $2,000 because you have all these different services. And so exactly. like what that, the reason that gives you such an advantage is because like you can now afford to spend more money on marketing to acquire a customer. Whereas a microblading artist, they can't spend that much money to acquire a customer because it's just digging into their profits because they only offer one service. And so exactly. if you're watching this right now or listening, um, not you, Harmony, but the the viewers, um, if you're watching or listening and you only offer one service, definitely consider adding another service, whether it's permanent jewelry, eyeliner, or just like, you know, you name it. It's just, it increases the advantage you have in business so much. Yeah. And on, on that, to add to that, there's this huge misconception that, you know, you don't want to be a jack of all trades, master of none. Right. So, but with something like permanent jewelry, like, there's not a whole lot of knowledge that goes in. It's not like this skill that you have to perfect, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, I get it. Welding takes my first bracelet took me an hour and a half. <laughs> Kid you not. <laughs> but now it's like two seconds. Yeah. Like not even, like, well, okay. I cut it. I measure it. I put the jump ring on. I pinch it close and I weld it just that fast. Like it's mm -hmm. maybe less than five minutes and they're in and out. So like, there's no way that I don't have five minutes in between clients that I can quickly do that kind of thing. So, and it's not something that takes a lot, a lot of space in my brain because <laughs> right. it is over full, it is over full right now with, with knowledge of all these courses that I've taken and stuff. And so, but I definitely think that it's important to diversify within reason for sure. Like, um, especially something like permanent jewelry. Like I get it. If you're going to be, you know, you don't, 
You don't want to be doing like microneedling and dermaplaning and all these different things that like a, it's a skill you have to perfect and it's all the nice part is about those things though I guess is like the skin knowledge is all the same <laughs> mm-hmm. but something like permanent jewelry for instance is so quick it's so easy it's you know it's not like it's a skill you really have to perfect and like master as an artist and people are going to choose you because of you and if you already have those clientele it's great it's not like oh I like her permanent jewelry work better than her permanent jewelry work that it's not like that like brows is you know what I mean so if you're already getting those clients you might as well just you know upsell them and everybody wants permanent jewelry I don't care who you talk to as soon as you tell them what it is and they actually understand that it's not a piercing or a tattoo everyone wants it (laughs) so it's pretty it's pretty awesome I definitely recommend anyone who's permanent makeup artist at it why not like just why not (laughs) you don't have to do pop-ups like me like I'm exhausted by pop-ups like I feel like I add them to my regular schedule and I'm working all the time but I mean even if you just had it in your shop like I catch so many of my existing clients like right before they leave as they're checking out my you know jewelry's all on display and they're like what is this and I tell Mm -hmm. them about it and five minutes later we're zapping them (laughs) well not them but the jewelry so really like you know, you take a brow client and, you know, in five minutes, you basically add another 100 to 200 to $300 of profit onto that service. Yeah. Well, and I charge, I charge less for my pop-ups and more for like non-pop-ups. Yeah. Like I did um, two bracelets and two charms on someone last week or the week before, and it was like $600. <laughs> so I mean <laughs> at pop-ups I'm only charging you know I think it's 95 for or 85 for sterling silver 95 for gold fill I don't know somewhere in around those prices I don't do that my assistant does that part of things but yeah. um so they're much less expensive whereas I charge for the per inch and a way higher cost in in my salon so it's five minutes to make you know 600 bucks <laughs> Yeah, and sure. <laughs> probably whoever's listening or watching this right now is probably thinking, like, okay, 600 bucks, but how much of that is profit or what does it cost you, you know, for the supplies? Yeah. Okay, so I really hope no clients are watching this <laughs> because some of my chains are like 30 cents an inch. Some of my chains are like $5 an inch and I'm charging 22, 25, 30, 35 dollars an inch. My charms that I buy I think are like four dollars, five dollars and I sell them for 25, 30. And people will pay. And I'm thinking like hey you want to buy a stack I'll give you 10 percent off don't worry about it. And people will so, pay that. I mean it's ridiculous and I have the Orion machine and I went you know I'm impatient we all know this so I went and bought it before you guys even offered it which is great that you offer it now um but I went and bought it and I paid like regular full price for it and so Canadian it worked out to like four grand or something but I've easily made that back in no yeah. time like I made it it's it's insane so like that machine is paid off I also I have to mention that I also have the original um off-brand machine the linked original mm-hmm. machine um and I like it I don't use it but it is a it is so important to have a backup it's so important yeah. to have a backup like if you didn't offer that I would have two Orions yeah just because or even well one or the other I would just I would still have two machines even mm-hmm. if I w- wasn't buying to like upgrade the only reason I wanted to upgrade is because there was somebody else in my area that had the Orion and I was like hey I need to at least match her yeah. <laughs> kind of thing so um but yeah like both great machines but I definitely it's so, so important to have an extra machine. When I was starting out permanent makeup, there was a time where my machine died when I was tattooing someone's eyebrows and I was very new and I'd spent so much money on this machine. This machine was like an $8,000 permanent makeup machine. Like it was a really good brand. Lots of people would know it. I'm not going to name the brand, um, but even expensive machines can crap out um, mm-hmm. and it crapped out. And I was left leaving, sending this client home with half done eyebrows. <laughs> Jeez. And I vowed up down to never, ever, ever do that again. So now from now on, anything I do, I always have two. Yeah, so I love that. It's great. It's great to have. And, and that's the worst thing in the world. I'm sure it's terrible to like send somebody home with like half done brows. They're probably just like mortified and you are too. Yes. I and wanted then... to quit. I wanted to quit <laughs> so bad. And like, I can't even imagine even being at pop-ups, like my Orion is in my, or my, um, my backup is in my, in my travel case with me just because like I would be devastated and I run pop-ups walk-ins only just because I don't want to deal with the ha like I want to try and get as many people in as quick as possible can you explain what a pop-up is to those watching yeah for sure so um I 
do permanent jewelry pop-ups. I actually have been one of those lucky ones that haven't had to reach out to people. Um, I've had salons, gyms, clothing stores all reach out to me. Um, and every time I do one, it's more exposure. They tag me in their posts and stuff and advertise for me that I'm going to be there. And then all these other stores and businesses find out about me and reach out to me and ask to book one. So uh, what a pop-up is, is I go to this, you know, retail store or hair salon or whatever it is. And I set up a table, um, and I do permanent jewelry at their location. And in exchange, the only thing I give them um, is a free bracelet or anklet for the owner. And I'm not stingy on like, if it's gold, like solid gold, I don't really care for the cost that I'm, I make, like the money that I make at these pop ups, I can definitely justify it because even gold chains aren't they're not super expensive. So right. I don't mind at all. So they let me come to their space. I make a killing. They bring, you know, brings foot traffic through the door for them. Um, and we usually do a joint giveaway as well too to boost advertising um, for that as well. Um, so we do like the store will give them a hundred dollar gift card and I'll give them a free bracelet. And it's like, like share tag comment to enter kind of thing. And so that just like ramps it up. So we're, um, I've grown my following actually a lot from that too, which is nice. It supplements the ad growth that I get. So, yeah. Um, I but yeah, even, so I go there and, and I do that stuff. You went over that really fast, but I think it was a really good idea. So I just want to dive deeper into that. So you said you do like a giveaway or kind of talk us through how that post is written and what, what do you say on there? Yeah, so I make the posts um, and I tag the other business as a collaborator. So it also shows up on their um, feed. And so it's a, it's a carousel post and I post um, information about the pop-up. So on the first slide, it says like the location, where it's going to be, um, what time it's going to be, and specifically walk-ins only, no appointments necessary specifically <laughs> no appointments thank you um and then the next slide is like what is permanent jewelry and i have a brief description on what it is then the next slide is um why get permanent jewelry and then i go into detail on why people should get it like best friend bracelets and mm -hmm. like mother daughter bracelets and boyfriend girlfriend stuff and and um, or goals and things like that and then the next slide is what is the cost and i post the cost of my pop-up um price which I delete that slide you know, when I want to increase my prices later on just so that nobody can go back and find it again. Um, so I have the, like, the price list on there and then also the forms of payment that we, we accept on the next slide, I believe. And I think that might be it. Um, and so I tag, oh, and then also on the first page, actually, sorry, where it says the location and the times and stuff, um, I um, post the giveaway information on there and I say also giving away um, hundred dollar gift card to blah, 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 clothing company, um, and free bracelet. And then in the caption, yeah, that's the word, um, in the caption, then I write instructions on how to enter and it just gets like all over. <laughs> it's crazy. So, um, that's what I do. And so when I invite the, um, the host as a collaborator, it shows up on their page as well too. Um, so, you know, my clients that are in that area, like, in share and stuff and follow them and then their clients as well so we kind of share um our followers that way and stuff too so it gets a lot of a lot of good stuff there so that's awesome and so if if somebody wants to go see an example of this post what is your instagram account uh, my instagram is at ice and ink dot wayburn um I'll spell, spell it out because it's all different everywhere. So I-C-E-A-N-D-I-N-K dot W-E-Y-B-U-R-N. Sweet. And, and I then, probably deleted the price list, but <laughs> pretend they're there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's a really good idea. And then um, if somebody is watching or listening, you're like, wow, I need to add permanent jewelry to my services. I can get you a very good offer right now if you mention this podcast. Um, just shoot me a DM at PMU Marketer on Instagram and uh, I'll hook you up. Shameless plug because I, I believe in the service and, you know, just like I pushed it up, I pushed it to you because um, I knew it would help you. Like now you've had your best month ever, which, you know, yes. and the cool thing is like, you know, it'd be one thing if you made like 15K a month, but it was only permanent jewelry, but like you're still doing what you love, which is brows. And so I'm not taking yeah. away from the fact that you're a brow artist, you know, it's, it's such a nice, like simple add on, like, you know, instead of sitting around playing on my phone because I finished my client early. I'm doing a bracelet on my client before they leave kind of thing. Like it's just supplemental and it doesn't take any extra time or anything. Um, the only thing that sucks for me right now is because I am booked so far in advance, there are no gaps in my calendar. So it's hard for people to get in. So I am squeezing people in 
outside of my hours, which I shouldn't be because, you know, boundaries, but it, I don't know, money also, yeah. right? So I can't really say no. Um, but yeah, it is it is good. And then I'm expanding my team and I'm growing my team here in the next couple months. So that's going to be Ooh, pretty exciting. epic. Also, that best month that I had was in February and I only had one pop up. And so in April, I have two back to back during the weekends. And then I have in May, I have the first weekend in May as well, too. I'm doing a 12 hour pop up. Ooh. <laughs> That's going to be yeah. fun, exhausting. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I got myself into, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so I know at the beginning of the podcast, I kind of mentioned like, can you be successful in this economy? Well, the th- the truth is, guys, I think a lot of you are using the economy as a crush. Um, it's, it's kind of like, well, the economy, this, the economy, that, and that's kind of your excuse to not, to not go out there and crush it. Like I, I, I have many clients, including Harmony right here, who's, you know, having their best months ever. It's cause they're getting out there, they're crushing it and they're not listening to the news. They're not listening to the negative, you know, naysayers. It's, it's about just like, Hey, I have a, I have dreams and I'm going to go accomplish it. So what are your thoughts on that Harmony? Yeah, absolutely. I feel like, you know, the economy is garbage right now and we're, you know, cost of living is going up and this and that and stuff. But I've, you know, I raised my prices in December by a hundred dollars and stuff. And so I, my thing is, is that when the economy sucks and when nobody has money, that's when you have to push harder. That's when you have to advertise more. That's when you have to post more. That's when you have to increase your ad spend, right? Because it does, it is going to take a little bit more and stuff. But I also increased my prices because everyone's like, Oh, how can you do that? Like, that's so scary. Like, the, the salon that I work at right now, I love them to death. I love them to death, but they care about people more than, you know, potentially losing their shirt kind of thing. And I, yeah. I care about both. I believe that there's a balance that you can find with both and stuff. And so I raise my prices just because I don't want to be, you know, what happens if $600 brows five years from now is, you know, ba- barely buys you a month's worth of groceries. Okay, well, it kind of barely does buy you a month's worth of groceries. But, like, you know what I mean, though? Like, I feel like if you're not on top of inflation and the economy, mm-hmm. you're going to end up below it. So, like, the cost of supplies is going up. The cost of rent is going up. The cost of food is going up. Like, if you don't increase your prices, you're going to lose your shirt. You need to. And guess what? Everybody else is going to get raises eventually, right? Like, cost of food at the grocery store is going, you know, getting higher. So people are going to need raises. So they're going to be making more money. It will balance out, but like you can't get caught underneath that because then what happens is you're going to be the cheapest round again and then nobody's going to trust you. So I feel like, you know, it's one of those things where you just got to kind of, you got to beat it before it it beats you. So yeah, I'm busy. I don't have a problem with it. I just know that you just got to hustle a little bit harder and it's fine. And it's the good. thing is, like most companies, like most Fortune 500 companies were started or founded during tough or down economies because like here's the thing, like back, you know, pre, pre I don't even want to say the word, but you know, the thing that happened where everybody was sick, um, I don't want it to like shadow ban me or anything, but before yeah. that, like, you know, it was just the economy was doing so great, but then there was just like money everywhere. The government was printing money. Every, there was just an overabundance of money, but what that meant was you know, everybody could just like start a new business just to have fun. And we had, we saw a lot of people, especially in the beauty industry, start a business just out of a hobby. They weren't really that passionate about it. They weren't really passionate about business, which, you know, as you know, like if you're not passionate about succeeding in business, you're not going to make it. Like I still work seven days a week. I stay hungry. Um, I'm not saying everybody hasn't worked seven days a week. That's just what I choose to do. But Um, I actually get excited when, you know, the economy goes down because, you know, now like it's just like with real estate, like Tony, my COO, he was a real estate agent, but he was talking about how like, you know, when the when everybody's buying houses and it's just like super easy mode, you know, really terrible real estate agents are still able to do really good because everybody's just buying anyways. Like you don't have to be a good real estate agent to sell. Now that the real estate market started yeah. to go down, it's really like washing out some of the bad agents. And, you know, I think it's the same thing with the beauty industry. It's kind of going to, this is going to wash out some of the people that should never have been in business. Should They're not entrepreneurs. You know, entrepreneur is a skill set. You got to have all these talents and abilities, just like basketball or any kind of sport. You know, entrepreneurship yeah. is a sport. You know, LeBron James, you know, doesn't need as much, you know, everybody needs mentorship and stuff like that. But like, not everybody's going to be a LeBron James of business. Like some people just don't have the skill sets or the mindset to really, you know, succeed 
um, in these kind of economies. And, and, but it all goes back to mindset and people are just using that economy thing is like, well, the economy, and then they just, you know, oh, well, is the economy forcing you to watch Netflix five hours a night or not follow up with your leads or not run ads? Like, no, yeah. <laughs> you got to get exactly. up and get it. And it kills me because, you know, that's the question I like to ask a lot of people. I, okay. <laughs> Sorry, my boyfriend. <laughs> um, he's an entrepreneur and he, um, it's his first time being an entrepreneur in the last three years and stuff. And so he's really grown into that entrepreneur mindset. But at first it started as, I just want to be a business owner. I just want freedom. But it wasn't like he didn't know what he had to do to get there and stuff. And I feel yeah. like, you know, you have to be, you have to be an entrepreneur and then figure out what you're going to do or, you know, figure out what you're going to do and what you love. And then you figure out if you are an entrepreneur or not. Right. And so, yeah, stuff like this, it very much is that way where, you yeah. know, the economy, you, there's people that make excuses and then there's people that just do stuff. And which one are you? You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, that's the same thing as like, not even in entrepreneurship. I just know people who just like, they'll always, for every, you know, solution you give them, they'll find an excuse. And it's just like, okay, well, they clearly don't want it bad enough. I feel like if you want it bad enough, you will figure it out and you'll find a way. Hundred so. percent. And and there's a lot of people that were sold the dream of, you know, you can be a six figure beauty boss and it's so easy to do and it just magically happens and clients will fall into your lap. And a lot of people sold that dream to people who really shouldn't be bosses. They should be employees, which there's nothing wrong with that, but they should be employees no. or contractors and work for someone who is an entrepreneur who will take that risk for them and it will help them, you know, provide them a, you know, and have that relationship. Um, but a lot well, of people are, you know, trying to be the boss, but they're just not yeah. made for it. Which sucks because like, they're probably, you know, I've seen lots of permanent makeup artists that are very much like that. Um, and they took a training program because they were promised that they were going to make a hundred thousand dollars in their first year because it's so easy because it's only, you know, so many clients a month. It's so many dollars each client and stuff like that. And it's just a bunch of BS. Mm -hmm. And then, so what they do is they get out into the real world and they're a good artist. They just have no business sense at yeah. all. And you know, it's like you said, like, it's not like it's a bad thing. Would you rather, you know, be an artist and be a boss and fail because you're not good at it or it's just not for you. You're not meant to do that. Or would you rather, you know, rent a room off someone where you have constant mentorship, like in a permanent makeup salon, right? Or would you rather, you know, even work, you know, under com as commission under somebody kind of thing and be successful long term rather than, you know, wasting all this money over a period of six months or a year and then you give up and you've wasted yep. all that time and all that money just to find out that you're because like I feel like a lot of people do that. They just give up because it's too hard and it is hard. It is hard. Yeah. So yeah. give it to a crazy person like me, <laughs> all that pressure. Yeah. And then you just do your thing and you do what you're good at and you be happy kind of thing. Like how I'm going to structure my business is we're on, they're paid on a tiered commission schedule. So the, you know, it's still going to get them to, you know, bust their butts to try and, you know, get their own clients and stuff, but they don't have to order supplies. They don't have to worry about advertising. They don't have to, you know, um, answer calls or book clients mm -hmm. and stuff. That's all on me. That's all my responsibility to figure out and stuff. And the people that I'm brought onto my team thus far are brilliant at what they do and they might branch out in the future, but at least this gives them a little bit of guidance and stuff and a little bit of mentorship while they're getting there or I'm going to keep them happy because that's what I do <laughs> <laughs> and they'll stick around for a long time. So I mean, it's like that commercial from Apple. It's like, we are the crazies, the ones who are, you know, think different. And, uh, you know, that's yeah. really what it is to be an entrepreneur. And if, if you're not someone who's a little bit crazy enough to like, cause it's like, I think who, who was it? Was it Steve Jobs or Elon Musk or someone that said like, you have to be super passionate about what you do because if you don't, you know, any normal sane person would just give up because it's hard to be an entrepreneur. Um, yeah. you've got to put in the work, you've got to grind and like I, I know that some like and, and then the person watches is probably like well i know this person and she makes all this money passively I, I guarantee you she put in a lot of work to get where they are right now like they built systems yeah. they had to take risk you know it doesn't just come overnight no definitely
Awesome. I didn't mean to go off on that that tan- tangent, but I think it's something that you know it needs to be said in the industry because there's been too much fluff and too many you know over promises you know in the industry in the past you know three to five years um, from what I've seen. And I just you know if if you're that person, you're like you know I've given my all, but I just don't like the risk. I don't like you know having to handle all these responsibilities. I just want to be an artist. Find an entrepreneur boss artist that will take you under her wing or like rent, you know, rent a room to you. Like there's nothing wrong with that. Exactly. And there's always space for that always. So. Cause there's, there's so many entrepreneurs out there that are looking for good team members. They're looking to expand their team and they will take care of you. And so, you know, just, I I don't think everybody needs to have this, you know, ego that they have to be a seven figure beauty boss to be successful. Like that's, you know, a lot of people drive themselves in the ground trying to get to that when it's not really meant for them. Exactly. And like, that's, I've even been reflecting for a while, thinking about what I truly want in the long term and stuff. And like, do I want to keep on this grind and, you know, have a bunch of different corporate stores and have, you know, a whole list of online, you know, teachings and, and courses and things like that? Or am I going to be okay with just this, you know, one location and stuff? It depends on how much freedom you want. And it yeah. depends on how hard you want to work, right? I don't know. I, I'm, I'm the type of person that gets bored too easy so as soon as i figure out this level of entrepreneurship i'm gonna be like "Mm, what's next (laughs) but that's just how i am um but i'm also you know just a little bit of inspiration for some i'm 31 i'm gonna be 32 this year and i'm finally only now getting my own storefront and i only started this i started this career 2016 so i've been at it for a while and i didn't take it seriously the first few years honestly truthfully 100 percent, i didn't even have instagram until 2020 so i feel like if you're not if you, also if you're not going to take it seriously and if you're not going to if you're not going to take it seriously and if you're not going to put the work in it's not going to get there and if you're not going to put the work in at least pay someone you <laughs> to you know do your advertising or something for you right like i'm not great at social I'm not great at ads. I'm okay at social media. I just don't want to do it enough. <laughs> so I am growing my team for that, right? Like I'm going to, you know, hire for my short, shortfalls and things like that. Um, and not necessarily that I can't do it or that I don't want to do it. It's just that I'd rather not do it. <laughs> so um, I just feel like y- you have to put the work in if you're going to, if you're going to, if you want to do what you want to do. And if you don't want to do it, then don't do it. It's only going to get as far as the work you're going to put into it. So yeah, and everybody wants the secret hack, the magic strategy, which I'm not like there are better, there are smarter ways to do things than others. Like, you know, there might be somebody working really hard right now digging ditches, but they're not making much money. So I'm not saying like it's all about hard work, but you can have yeah. the best strategies in the world and the best tactics in the world and watch all my videos and podcasts. But if you don't actually take action, it's not going to mean anything. Yes, 100%. Definitely. And then also, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of fluff out there in the internet too, right? So like not everything's going to work for you, right? Um, I relate it to like skin treatments. There's thousands of different skin treatments that you can get that do the same thing or claim to do the same thing, but they do just on all different people. So like what might be right for this client is not going to be right for this client. What's going to give great results on this client is not going to be you know, give great results on this client kind of thing, because there's so many different machines and treatments and stuff you can get, right? And they all do the same thing, but they don't. So mm-hmm. it's like all the fluff us on the internet, right? You're going to find so many different people saying different things, and you're just going to get overwhelmed and confused. Um, but take it one step at a time. And know that if you try something and you implement it, don't give up. Like quitters, <sighs> quitters, just that's it. Just quitters. Um, <laughs> I have no <laughs> more words after that. But like, you know, failure is not a bad thing. Failure is just a stepping stone if you want it to be to something better. I can't even tell you how many times I've failed. I was a nail tech. I hated it. Hated nails. Hated nails. Um, did that. I worked at a bank. Hated it. You know, I have, you know, spent money trying to do my own ads. Hated it. Did awful. (laughs) You know, (laughs) I, um, had a business name that wasn't that great. Switched it. Like you just got to be willing to, you know, do something different. If something's not working, fix it kind of thing. So, but yeah, there's so much fluff out on the internet and stuff. And sometimes you're going to watch a whole bunch of damn videos and they're going to be garbage and they're not going to do anything for you. And you're going to do everything you can to implement them. And it's still not going to work. So switch it up, do something else. Hire Jake. (laughs) Well, if they are watching this video, it means they're on the right track there. I mean, you can watch my videos and I think they're all right. I'm just kidding. (laughs) Yeah, definitely. Um, 
No, but on a serious note, like, yeah, I th- I'm all about education. Like, I love watching podcasts like this. Like, that's why I do so many of these podcasts, because that's, you know, at, at nighttime, instead of watching, like, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with, like, watching Netflix occasionally, but I'm just the kind of person where, you know, I just don't enjoy watching things that are, like, fictional and, like, not really valuable. Like, where I, I like watching interviews like this, where I can learn from people that are, like, you know, maybe ahead of where I'm at or have more experience than me. And so that's why I try to give back to people. It's because this is how I, you know, learned everything I know is through some experience and then a lot of, you know, education as well. I know this has been such an inspiration, or you're an inspiration, so I know this has, you know, been really helpful for people. So, you know, go, I'll, I'll include her Instagram link below. Go give her a shout out, send her a message, say, hey, thank you for sharing all this advice. Um, and, you know, once again, like I know you were on the podcast a year ago, so it's awesome. Just like we're going to do a podcast every year with your with your new we growth. We should. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Um, but thank you so much for joining me again. Yeah, thanks for having me again. Of course. Um, Alrighty, guys, if you like this, please click that like button and comment. What was your favorite um, piece of advice that we shared? What kind of, was there any light bulb moments? I'd love to hear your feedback below. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Bye.